I'm Jenny Ryan, and I read the book Mommy, I'm Still Here, and I'm doing a case on bipolar disease. Bipolar disease is a chronic mental illness, a disease that can be passed down genetically. For many years, it can go unnoticed and is often first diagnosed as depression. Chloe was a typical 17-year-old blue-eyed brunette and followed her brother Michael, who was also diagnosed with this disease. <clears throat> Symptoms can have a drastic change in behavior. They may start out subtle, but will continue to increase. Some examples are increased irritability, reactions to change in temperature, noise, light, etc., withdrawal from normal activities with friends and at school, sleeping too much or too little, depression, low self-esteem, seeing things that are not there, hearing voices, jumbled thoughts, and thoughts of suicide. Bipolar disease affects not only the individuals that have the disease, but it also affects the people around them. This is a great example of Bronfenbrenner's microsystem. In Chloe's case, she became very withdrawn and did not want to leave her home or her mother. She was very insecure, but once was very social and outgoing, and had high grades and excelled in everything. There are so many treatments for bipolar illness that you have to try so many different types to get it under control. Some of the medications are Depico, which is a change in a chemical and electrical impulses in your brain, which controls mood. Antipsychotic medication, which controls the hallucinations and nightmares, and lithium. Lithium was found in 1970 and one of the first drugs to show significant promise to treat bipolar disorder and is still used today. Chloe and her brother, unfortunately, were pushed to be admitted to a psychiatric hospital due to wanting to commit suicide. And last, craniosacral therapy was found to be one of, the, one of Chloe's favorite and most effective treatments to calm her anxiety. It was a hands-on energy healing medication in which she used quite frequently. This is the mass media part of the exosystem. It has an effect on people that don't understand bipolar disease. The disease changes who you once were. Family and friends have to adapt their lifestyle to fit the affected person. Caitlin, her college roommate, was always upset and called her mother with concerns about Chloe. Michael and Chloe's friends were seeing changes in their behavior and personality. Their parents gave 100% dedication to their appointments and supervision. This all had an effect on their microsystem. The medication side effects were deep depression, frequent anxiety, panic attacks, difficulty sleeping, gruesome dreams, continued weight gain, severe hair loss, and cutting. There was a time mental illness was never understood and a person was strictly admitted to a mental hospital and never truly diagnosed. Today, the subject has been studied so thoroughly and there has been so many treatments available that can be effective. A person with bipolar disease can live a normal life as long as they adhere to their medical regimen of medications, therapy, and family support. As you can see through the study of Chloe and Michael's life-changing experience, they both went from a typical lifestyle to an atypical lifestyle. Their friends and family's lives changed at that point as well. <laughs> they are so lucky these days that there's more we can do for the disease and we're able to treat it the best that we can to our ability. Now we're going to have a guest speaker here today that's going to talk, us, talk to us about her um, coping and struggles with um, having the bipolar disease. Um, and her name is Violet Stanford. Um, come on in, uh, Violet. Oh, hi. Hi. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good. Thanks for coming in today. No problem. Um, so today we're going to talk about um, when you're diagnosed and just some of the struggles that come along with a bipolar disease. Um, so when were you first diagnosed? Um, I, my mom, I was actually diagnosed at the age of four. My mom started noticing some, um, changes in my behavior at a really young age and she wanted to make sure there wasn't something really serious and she brought me to the doctors and they actually diagnosed me with bipolar disease. Oh yeah. Okay, so how how did this affect your family? Did it, you know, were they supportive? Um, well my family, it was hard for my family to take that I had the disease but they are really supportive of me and they helped me deal with my anxiety, my depression, and helped me really get through it and they are really supportive. Oh, nice. So what about when um, when it came to having a job? Did you were, are you able to work with this? You know, with the with this. Well, now I have a job and I absolutely love it. And it's I work with people and um, it's really great. My employer is really great. He's really understanding of my disease. How old were you when you got your first job? 
Um, I had a high school job when I was about um, 14, and I worked at a deli. Um, my employer, unfortunately, wasn't the most supportive of the disease. And, you know, right. I, it's understandable because there's not a lot of education out there about the disease. Right, yeah. So, um, so your family was supportive. That's great. And um, so what is the hardest... What is the hardest struggle with you having bipolar disorder? I think the hardest struggle would probably be the depression because, you know, it's just all, it's always on and off. You never know yeah. when you're going to fall into depression and, you know, you never know when you're going to come out of it. And it's really, it affects your family in a large way. Oh, so when, what were you, pers what is the best medication that helped you, um, that helped cope with your, with your disease? Um, well, my doctor actually prescribed me lithium. I was oh. on a few other um, prescription medications that weren't really working for me, but lithium really seemed to curb my um, symptoms, and it really helped with the depression and the anxiety and the, the you know the two main symptoms of the disease. Nice. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming no in and problem. sharing with no with everybody, and um, that was awesome. No thank problem. You. You're welcome. Thank, thank you, you for having me. Yep.